Hi everybody, it's Bimal Donato here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about installing an Ansel system. Ansel systems are something that are actually quite confusing to a lot of people, um, especially if you've never installed one before, never seen one before. Um, just like I went through. Um, that's why I'm making this video because there aren't many videos out there that'll teach you how to install one of these things. Um, you know, sorry about the uh, bad camera footage. Um, you know, I'm using my cell phone, holding it in my hand. Don't have a tripod. You know, just doing this. I'm new to this. Um, maybe I'll get better at it eventually. But um, first off, you're gonna take a look at your prints. You're gonna basically be looking for the mechanicals in this, and also um, your your power print. Now, your power print is gonna show you what circuits and where your vent hoods are and um, what you're going to have to run over there to, to power those things. Now our print called out for two different circuits to go to each of the, one of these vent hoods. I guess that's the old way of doing things. It's not needed anymore. We ran the circuit and found out, well, we don't need that circuit. We we'll only need one to power up the Ansel panel. Um, and then it does the rest. Um, so you're going to want to find out where your supply air and your makeup air units are coming from. And you're going to want to look at what circuit numbers it, the print calls out to, to land that stuff. Now if you're, if you're doing a, a brand new install, a ground up install, you wouldn't have to really worry about that so much because the engineers do usually do a pretty good job of making sure that everything is dialed down and since you're putting things in new you're the first person there so you don't have to deal with anybody's crap that they've left from behind which ran into had to do some stuff to fix it um, you wanna if you're doing a, a TI um, a tenant improvement a remodel uh, where you have other things that are still being used at that point in time when you, you're remodeling one area of a facility. Uh, in this case, we're working at a school, um, putting in a culinary arts classroom. Um, you, you basically, uh, you want to look through that stuff. You know, we, we ran all of our pipes and got everything there and realized, oh, wow, some maintenance guy along the way added this and and it's not in the, in the it's not in the panel schedule so the engineer probably didn't even know about it now they don't really walk these places and open up the panels to see what's there they just kind of draw it all out and it wasn't something anybody accounted for um, so that was one of those things that we needed the space we didn't have it so we had to take out what they ran and put it into a different panel and then we already had run our stuff to that panel so we needed a place to land it that's where it was. That's where the print told us to put it. You're going to want to keep track of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, in this case, we didn't really know what it was doing. We kind of, we followed the pipe. We figured out kind of what was going on, but it was going into areas that were locked, and we couldn't figure out what it was supposed to do, so we just put it in a different panel and, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh... Yeah, you'll want to keep, you want to pay attention to stuff like that. And you want to write down if you ever have to change anything from what the print tells you. Because you're going to have to do as built in the end. which And you're going to have to design your panel schedules to accommodate for all that. So, just keep track of everything that you do. Um, anyways, uh, so, now you've figured all that out. And you know where you're going to bring all your circuits from. So, you're going to want to bring those out over to where the Ansel panel goes, nearby where those units are. So, you know, usually there's more than one vent hood in a kitchen facility. So, what you're going to want to do is, um, you're going to want to run the, the nearby uh, exhaust fan and supply air fans. The exhaust fan is going to connect to the vent hood, and it's going to exhaust all of the, the fumes and the, the smoke and everything from all of the kitchen equipment that's underneath the vent hood. And then, um, your supply air is going to bring in um, actually moist air. It, it, it kind of helps keep the air conditioning in there since you're bringing air in and you're uh, and sending it right back out. Well, you're sending hot air out. You're, 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 you're cooling the air with your air conditioners um, 
and then you're uh, you're bringing in moist air. So what that moisture does in the air, they they actually run water through silicon pads. It runs like a swamp cooler, and what it does is it holds the temperature inside there. Like it, it it's almost like a battery for temperature. Um, you you notice that uh, if you if you cool air down, and then all of a sudden you shut off your air conditioner, it's not very long before it gets hot in there, but so you take a jug of water and you put it in your refrigerator and then you take it out after it's been sitting in there for a while it'll still stay cold for quite some time it's because water actually holds a temperature it, it contains it like a battery so the the cool air or the air conditioner actually dries air as it comes into the building um, for, it, it, it goes through the register uh, through the return um, up into the unit out through your register and it just recirculates the air in the room and, and, and runs it through the evaporative coil um, that uh, makes everything cold. It actually removes heat is what it does. It's An air conditioner is basically a heat sponge. It goes in there, draws off the heat, blows it outside, goes in there, draws off the heat, blows it outside. It's, it's pretty simple concept you compress a gas it gets hot you blow off the heat and then it's compressed and it's not so hot and then you release it through an orifice it's a small opening and it goes through the coil and it, it, it at that point becomes cold when you take a, a, a cooled compressed gas and you release it it becomes really cold um, actually it's absorbing heat and then when it goes around the other side it recompresses and then gets hot again and that heat's blown off it goes in it absorbs the heat heat sponge um, it's in a circular loop in there so it's not really supplying anything to it it's just recirculating um, but uh, that humidity from the makeup air unit actually helps hold the temperature inside the room while you've got this heat that's being exhausted out Kind of makes sense. I had a similar idea a long time ago of a combination swamp cooler air conditioner. This is exactly what I was talking about. Um, so you're gonna bring over your your feeds, your your load or your line side, over to where your Ansel system's gonna go, and you're gonna need to mount a box up above there, and you're gonna need to pull a nice coil of wire um, because. It doesn't always show you the right place where the Ansel panel is going to be and sometimes the print will show you um, the opposite side of the hood uh, as being where the, the Ansel panel is going to be and it shows up and all of a sudden it's on the wrong side. Well, you're going to have to bring those wires now to the other side of the hood. So you're going to want to pull enough wire to go from your box to either side of that hood and that's going to be your line side pretty much what you need. You need those wires to get down into that Ansel panel. As soon as that happens, you're going to need enough wire to go up to your unit. And if you want to pull all this wire beforehand, then just leave yourself a big loop so that you have extra. You'd rather have extra than not enough. You don't want to do makeup in your boxes because it's just... It just causes problems. It um, it makes it to where thing bad things can happen. Um, one loose connection and stuff isn't gonna work. So you know if you directly pass all your wires through, you don't have to worry about a connection. But wires stay connected. Um, but you're still gonna want to ground the box. I mean, you don't have to if you pass your wires right through the box, but it's just safe. You know, you never know if you're going to have a nick in a wire or something like that, and then the box isn't going to be properly connected to the conduit, so you're not going to have a ground getting through there, and it could energize. I mean, it's very faint possibility, but, you know, it's a good idea just to do it. I mean, a lot of stuff was run before, which, uh, they didn't even ground their boxes. They just ran everything, and, oh, people got shocked when they touched the conduit, you know. Eventually, they realized, hey, you know what? We need to ground everything. We need to stop letting people get shocked. And that's what the point of grounding everything is, is that it will shut off the breaker if a hot wire ever comes into contact with it. And you ground anything that you might come into contact with so you don't become the ground. That's the whole point of the ground wire. So, you're going to basically 
run your once the ansels show up and the hoods get installed and everything like that you're gonna run your line side down into the ansel panel and it's all labeled in there it tells you exhaust fan supply fan you land your low your line side to where it says to line your land si line side you line your load side to where it says to line land your load side there's usually a makeup air and an exhaust per uh, per ansel hood so pretty easy. The ones that are closest to it, the ones that connect to it, are the ones that you're going to connect into um, and run out of. Now, we ran into the makeup air. Our print was calling for an interlock circuit for the makeup air units. So we ran a circuit over to it. We ran it in with one of our feeds to the uh, to the, one of the uh, exhaust fans. Um, just so that we could get the circuit through there, you know, just using the conduit as a, a chase. Um, and then ran it around to all the makeup air units because we figured, well, they all need an interlock circuit. The Ansel panel creates that circuit. We didn't even need it. I'd rip it out. Just like that other circuit that we ran to the Ansel panel that called for. I'd rip it out. Um... Basically, uh, you're going to run your loads up to your units and make up those loads. And uh, you're going to also need to run up a wire, uh, a hot wire and a neutral wire to control your dampers. That's that interlock circuit they were talking about, but the Ansel system provides that circuit, so we didn't need it. It's, it the Ansel system wants to control that stuff, and for good reason. So anyways, the Ansel system sends the circuit up to the dampers inside the makeup air unit. And then there's another circuit for a water control valve that goes down below. Now water control valve, it sprays water across the pads when it's too warm in there and then it, uh, it, it empties out the water that's inside there when it gets too cold. Um, and, and Basically, the makeup air unit is going to keep running, but it regulates the water flow across the pad based on the temperature inside the room, it's like a thermostat kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you're going to need to pass some wires through from the rooftop up at the makeup air unit and down to the water control valve down below it. Um, you need to control your dampers going up and you need to control your water flow valve going down. And your water control valve is going to be located underneath the uh, the rooftop because those pipes that the the water pipes that in the drain lines that they're going to be connecting to those things they're going to stub up a water supply line and they're going to stub up a water drain line. Now they're going to connect those underneath the ceiling. That's where the valve goes. It keeps the valve protected and stuff like that because it's underneath the roof. Makes sense, right? It also helps if the plumbers install those things in the correct direction. That way uh, they work. Um, you're going to basically send up a hot wire and a neutral wire and you're going to bring down a hot wire and a neutral wire and you're going to have a ground wire through the conduit. You need a ground wi wire in every conduit. Every conduit needs a ground wire. It's just, that's the way it goes. And um, I, I like even having a ground wire in empty conduits because, you know, the ground wire is there. All you have to think about is the circuits that you're running. Um, and at the same point, the ground wire makes sure that everything is bonded together. And that's another subject, bonding and grounding. And bonding is just simply connecting one conductor material to another conductor material via a conductor material. And... Um, Grounding is the sinking of a ground rod and then connecting all of the grounds to the ground rod. That's when you actually ground everything. But bonding everything together, yeah, you, you that's when you run your ground wire. You bond it to every box, to every connection, everywhere, so that you know, there's no possibility that, oh, this pipe slipped out of this box because someone didn't tighten the lock ring and now it's just hanging there and it doesn't have a ground because, well, it can't because... It's not connected. 
stuff like that, you know, just, just ground every box, and it helps keep your pipes from falling apart, too, um, anyways, uh, so, you're gonna need a shunt trip wire out of your panel, and it needs to connect to all of the panels that control the power to all of the devices, the equipment, under the hoods. Um, all that stuff needs to be hooked to a shunt trip breaker. It's got a hot and a neutral wire on the breaker itself. And you, you run a wire from ST in the Ansel system and N1. And you're going to connect that to all your shunt trip breaker coils. That way, and, and, and you're only going to run that to your main hood. You're not going to run it to the other hoods. You're just going to hook it to the main one that also controls your gas valve. You don't want to be going from hood to hood trying to figure out how to reset the thing. You want one hood to reset everything. And it'll be controlled by... Uh, it, our system is controlled by an LCD screen that's installed like a light switch in the wall. Uh, we stub a pipe up. Uh, it, it, it's just a piece of Cat5 that goes over from it to the Ansel system, plugs in, and the LCD screen can talk to the Ansel system. And you can use that LCD screen to reset the gas valve, turn on the vent hood, which when you turn on the vent hood, it turns on the supply fan and it turns on the exhaust fan. Um, so you're going to need that circuit to power up the panel. Now, the way I remember how to connect it is the swine flu. You're going to connect it to H1 and N1. <laughs> H1 N1, the swine flu. Um, so that N1 connection, there's there's three of them, and they're all connected by jumpers. And even the lights for the hood, those are controlled by the the circuit uh, that powers up the panel. Um, and those have their own uh, neutral connection circuit, and it's jumpered with N1. Um, and, and it passes through the power for the lights um, when you power up the panel. It, it controls the lights, it controls the dampers, it controls the flow valve, everything, just that one circuit. Um, so you run your shunt trip out to your panels, to your breakers, so they're going to shunt trip all the equipment underneath the hoods. So when you run all that equipment, you need to make sure that it lands to a shunt trip breaker. Um, so you've also got, now when you run that wire up to your, uh, to your makeup air for the dampers, you're going to be wanting to run it to SF1, that's supply fan 1, and uh, supply is your makeup air, which is, uh, that unit I was just talking about, uh, that's going to make up to SF1 and N1. And uh, your shunt trip, of course, is ST and uh, N1. And there now there's micro switches inside the, the Ansel system. And you're going to have one micro switch per Ansel system, plus one to work the uh, fire alarm system. The fire alarm system is going to do is it's going, it, it connects to the, the common the normally open and the normally closed. There's a module in there that connects to it. And it reads that information of the state that the unit's in, whether it's in fire mode or safe mode, and when it gets a, a, a signal telling it that it's in fire mode, it's going to take and send out a signal to another module, which is basically a relay, and it's going to break contact between a connection inside the air conditioner unit and shut it down. Now that's not really required by the fire marshal or city code in that area, but the school wants it that way. For anything that supplies over 2,000 cubic foot of CFM um, of, of airflow, uh, even though this is recirculating airflow and it's not, um, it's not supply airflow, they don't really want air moving around in there, giving even the chance for any combustible gases to get, you know, because fire needs oxygen to burn. If it doesn't have oxygen, it can't burn. 
But the Ansel has inside it. Now, if you've ever fired a regular fire extinguisher with ABC in it, you see, you notice it makes a big mess. It's like this yellow powder that gets everywhere, and you don't want that going over kitchen equipment that you're going to be cooking food with. So what you want to use is a, an inert gas, um, like a nitrogen or, um, or, or CO2, something like that. And they use these same systems in, um, in IT rooms uh, so that you, know, you're not, you don't have a fire sprinkler inside an IT room because you don't want all your equipment getting wet. And you also don't want to fire ABC all over your equipment. So the best way, if there's ever a fire in there, is using inert gas and an Ansel system. It will suck out the air while supplying an inert gas and shut down any supply air or air conditioners that will allow the air to move. Um, so you're going to need to make a loop between all of your Ansel systems. And that loop is going to pass through every micro switch in every Ansel system and you're going to want to code those wires, you know, so say you have what we're dealing with right now, three Ansel hoods connected together. Um, we, I ran a, a, a black wire, a red wire, and a brown wire. Yeah, you could use a blue wire. It's just what I had. So just different colors so that I knew which Ansel I was hooking up. I said, okay, this Ansel right here, that's a red Ansel. That Ansel over there, that's a black Ansel. And that Ansel over there, that's a red Ansel. Not trying to be racist or anything, but... <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up... Say I'm going to be hooking up my red Ansel system. I'm going to hook to C1 and AR1. Now, there's two blocks inside there, there's two basic termi termination blocks in, in the Ansel system. There's one above and there's one below. And the one to below is where you're going to connect your, uh, your shunt trip. And there's also a gas valve. You ha uh, the, they'll install a gas valve in the gas line. And you need to run uh, an N1 and it says on there gas, um, or gas valve and you run that over to the gas valve it'll keep the gas valve open while uh, everything's running but if there's ever a fire it shuts that gas valve down and it makes everything turn off now you're gonna go from C1 you're gonna run it to and it doesn't matter C1 AR1 all you're doing is making contact it, 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 the micro switches doesn't matter whether you wire it to the common or to the um, it depends um, on the micro switches that you're hooking up to whether you're hooking to normally open or normally closed because the caulking mechanism that that arms the system it has like a stud in it it's it's like this stud that sticks out and then the micro switches mount so that the the, the finger of the micro switch sticks out. Now the ones on top are mounted upside down and the ones on bottom are mounted down below so that those fingers are basically sticking like this. In one position it's going to go in this direction and so this one is going to be not in its normal state and this one is released being in its normal state. Now all of a sudden you cock the system. Oh, now it goes this way. I can't get my fingers straight. Now it goes this way. Now this one is in its normal state, and this one is not in its normal state. So when you're hooking these things up, you have to pay attention to how you're connecting these switches because you're going to be using three switches. One of them is going to be on the top, and two of them are going to be on the bottom. And the fire alarm people hook to one of the ones on the top and they hook to mm, common normally open and normally closed so the fire alarm system always knows what state the, uh, the, the system is in um, you're, uh, you're gonna want to wire these things so that when it's in its cocked position you have an open circuit 
you don't want any power flowing through the circuit for those micro switches to those Ansel systems. The only time you want there to be power flowing through that that circuit is when you're in a fire mode, and that triggers it triggers the Ansel system to um, shut off the supply fans, but keep the exhaust fans running to remove the air from the room, and it also triggers the fire alarm system to shut down the air conditioner units and. Um, blows in their gas over the top of the fire and makes it to where the fire cannot continue combustion. It's a fairly simple concept. Um, so you basically run a loop. Now your red system is the only one that's going to hook to that uh, that C1 and AR1. The other ones are just going to pass through the micro switches in that unit and go back up and out to the next one. So now we're going to get to our black unit. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to run our black wire through the micro switch. Make sure that it's in an open state in the cocked position. And you're going to land that to C1 and AR1 through the micro switch in that Ansel as well so you want this to go through the micro switch in every Ansel even the one that you're landing it to and so then now we're gonna get to our brown one and we're gonna do the same thing C1 AR1 through the micro switch in that system other two pass through the micro switches and onto their respective Ansel systems it's pretty simple it's uh a loop so that each system knows if there's a fire in another system um, which makes that contact and shuts the whole thing down and each one of those loops they're all connected on the same cock so whichever one goes off it's gonna break the loop on all three systems and it or no not break the loop it's gonna make the loop on all three systems and it's going to send that thing into fire mode so, pretty cool. Um, anyways, uh, that's how it works. That's the way it all goes together. Um, uh, let's see what else is there. Um, there's temperature sensors. Those temperature sensors go in um, to the into the, the actual duct work. The, the, right as soon as the air is leaving the Ansel system, that uh, there's a temperature sensor, and that has to connect into the Ansel system for everything to work right. And um, also, there's a heat detector. And you've got to run that heat detector out from the Ansel system and mount it uh, at least 10 feet away from the heat source. Uh, so you're cooking and stuff like that you don't want it to set off the heat detector you want the heat detector to be more towards the center of the room or something at least 10 feet away from that hood um, yeah that's pretty much it that's how you connect one of those things it's really simple you uh, when you go uh, with your makeup airs you'll have a connection for um, a, a a brown wire and a white wire as well as a blue wire and a white wire. The, you know, the blue wire and the white wire connect to your dampers. The brown wire and the white wire will go downstairs to your uh, your your water valve, your flow valve. Um, and you run a ground through that too and you just ground everything. Um, and your, your gas valve the same way, you just run the neutral and the, the gas valve uh, circuit over to it with the ground wire and you connect that up and you're going to need a handy box or a chase nipple um, to connect the handy box to the, the valve itself so you can connect into it and make sure that your all your connections are closed up real good um, <coughs> am I forgetting anything usually in these environments in these kitchen uh, commercial kitchen environments they'll have an automatic dishwasher now this dishwasher it was a Hobart dishwasher had many different options to it you know there was an option for gas uh, what do they call it um, 
it, it's like a um, it's an acceler it's a it heats up the water after you know it, it, you run hot water to it but then it even further heats up the water um, so there's either gas or there's electric and so there's the option for it if it's electric you add another contactor and um, then you have to put in a, a terminal block and then connect all three contactors to that one terminal block and then land your uh, your main lines to the terminal block and then from out of the dishwasher there is actually a control relay circuit um, you can pull your neutral from uh, your um, you can pull your neutral from the, the there's a transformer inside there that runs off a 220 and it creates its own neutral to run the electronics inside it and everything so you just tap in off of that and you run it over to that control relay circuit and you use that to power up a relay that you install because there's you never know where the thing's going to go uh, they don't know at the factory they don't know what kind of ductwork sizing that you're going to need and what kind of what size exhaust fan you're going to need so you're going to have to supply that relay because you're going to have to size it for the for the exhaust fan that you're installing um, they're not just going to put in any relay and then have you have to mess with it later they don't put in a bigger relay than they really need to it's, just, it's your job <laughs> and there's a uh, there's a, a another thing that comes in for the, the solenoid for a garbage disposal uh, setup, and then there's like a, a, a heat um, sensor that goes in that you've got to connect into the dishwasher. Um, and the instructions show you how to do it. And it's a, it's kind of simple. There's a, a switch in there that you've got to connect to, and um, you've got to connect over to your to your neutral, uh, you actually it, it provides the switch. You you have to land it inside there, the same place where you land your relay inside the electronics compartment, and it, it switch is basically just a um, it's like a thermal overload switch that goes over to the heat detector and it runs through to power the solenoid at the garbage disposal. And not really the plumber guy. I, mean, I kind of understand what's going on, but um, just shuts water flow off. Uh, yeah, there's a there's like a water trough that flushes through um, food um, uh, waste material, and it just flushes it through a trough and down to the garbage disposal. So it turns on that valve, runs that stuff across, and dumps it down. And if there's ever a problem where it's too hot, it shuts it down. It's another kind of simple thing, um, I don't know, uh, it, stuff is confusing when it's explained to me by somebody else, but all of a sudden, when it's in my head, I completely understand it, and a lot of times I can explain it a lot better than this guy saying one thing and that guy saying another thing and having to put it all together, and, uh, anyways, so, that's how you install your Ansel system, um, now that I've got it down, it's child's play. Anyways, this is B-Mall Donato signing off. Have a good one.